I'm delighted uh, that I'm joined today by uh, Rishuki yes. Takahashi at yes. uh, Kyoto University. Right. Um, and you've been having a very busy week. I mean, look, this is the front cover of the Japan Times talking about a new treatment strategy, which I think most patients are very excited about. And this is a form of stem cell therapy, right? Right. So it'd be really good, I think, for us to just hear what you mean by, what doctors mean by stem cells for Parkinson's disease. What is it we're trying to achieve? Okay, so uh, stem cell is a hope for the uh, resident of medicine in many fields, yep. especially in Parkinson's disease. Because in Parkinson's disease, there's a long history of fetal uh, midbrain cell transplantation. So this is cells taken from aborted fetuses? Yeah, that's right. That were going to become dopamine producing? Yes, yes. And putting those into patients? Yeah, yeah. That was sort of 20 plus years ago we started doing that? Yes, yes. Uh, it was, uh, it started in uh, mid-80s in Lund University in well, Sweden. Yep. Uh, Andreas Jokland and his colleagues yep. did the first uh, trial. And after that, uh, more than four, 400 cases have been uh, adopted, uh, transplanted fetal cells. And some of them showed very dramatic effects. So some of the uh, most, uh, most of the cases uh, need not have uh, uh, leveled up anymore before yeah. after the transplantation. So they can stop their tablets. Yeah. So because I, think, tablets. I think patients have this concept that stem cells will go in and replace their original brain cells, make all of the connections. Is that yeah. what stem cells do? No, so it's, it's uh, uh, to be precise, you have to differentiate stem cells into dopaminergic cells. Yeah. So in fetal uh, uh, mid-brain cells, uh, mid-brain uh, tissue transplantation, in this case, uh, the dopaminergic cells are already there. Yeah. So, uh, but the, the problem with uh, fetal cells is you have to uh, obtain the uh, uh, abortion. Uh, so abortion this is an ethically challenging area, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, in some in, in some countries, uh, uh, yeah, in some countries, this is uh, actually an uh, ethical challenge. I think. Yeah. So, but uh, but if you use uh, uh, IPS cells, yeah. So this is the well, new breakthrough, and yeah. one of your colleagues got the Nobel Prize for this work. So, right, that's what right. what do we mean by induced pluripotent stem cells? What, what oh. What is the difference between those and what we've been using up to date, these fetal cells? So what's an IPS? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are two kinds of stem cells which are uh, going to be used in, in uh, transplantation of coconut cells into Parkinson's disease brain. One is IPS cells, the other is embryonic stem cells. Embryonic? Embryonic stem right. cells. Embryonic stem cells is, uh, is a pluripotent cell which is developed from also aborted fetal uh, right. uh, uh, tissue. Yeah. So, um, and both IPS cells were, in contrast, IPS cells were derived from uh, uh, differentiated cells of, of any individual. You can re-differentiate the cells into... So, uh, where did they get those original cells from, for these the uh, differentiating? Do they come from babies or aborted fetuses, or do they come from no, adults, or...? So, you can, you can pick up the, uh, any cells of, of yourself, or for example, the, uh, the skin cells, yeah. skin fibroblasts, yeah. who are most... Uh, Usually, our uh, most commonly used uh, resource is uh, blood mononuclear cells. So you take a person's blood cells, their own blood cells, yeah, yeah. and then you put them under special conditions, mm -hmm. and you can drive them away from being blood cells or skin cells yeah. to being more basic cells. Right, that right. You can then, if you like, train mm -hmm. to produce dopamine in this case. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah. this is this is a, a very complicated process by the sound of it. Many years of work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Complicated, but but very uh, stably as uh, it, it, it is a reproducible process. Right. So according to a uh, correct protocol, you, anyone can induce and make IPS cells from mature cells. So from this uh, approach, are you saying that for an individual patient to have this, you would take their own cells? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Yes, yeah, there are two options for, for transplantation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one option, as you, as you said, uh, you can take the cells from the patient yes. and uh, define and uh, make IPS cells out of the patient cells, right. then uh, differentiate into topomenal cells. So, that might have the advantage that it might reduce um, rejection, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that, exactly. Right. exactly. That, that's a, that's a, a bigger advantage of, of autograph. Well, that's an use. autograph. That's auto. So it comes from yourself, it goes back into yourself. A bit like sometimes uh, we talk about bone marrow before you have the treatment, it goes back in, I see. Yeah, yeah. So what's the other approach? 
So you have to approach it out of that. Out of that, yeah. Autograph, uh, the, the disadvantage of uh, autograph, you have to, uh, you have to, you, you, you need a lot of, a uh, lot of money and labor to check, examine w uh, whether the cell is really okay. So what so you're saying is it, it's much more intense to take my cells, make sure they're going to be perfect to go back into me, yeah, yeah. than perhaps if you like create a farm, a bank of cells that yeah. might come from people who are much younger and fitter and healthier than I am, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. and then work on those. Is, is that what you mean, it's sort of the costs and the, the, the time yeah. is going to be easier if we sort of have a bank of healthier cells to work for? That's right, that's right. So uh, if you use uh, bank cells, it is already, it's quality control is, is done. The quality is there. Yeah, quality is, uh, is, is assured yeah. by, uh, by previous uh, examination. Yeah. So, so in this case, in, in uh, this time, uh, in total study, we used uh, um, we we op we we, uh, we chose uh, allograph option. Yeah. So because of that, uh, the advantage of quality control. Right. And uh, uh, if you choose the uh, the uh, uh, bank cells which has a uh, gel uh, match, it, it, who so this is the immune match? system. Immune system. Human lymphocyte antigen. Yeah, yeah, HLA. Yeah, yeah, GLA, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, immune system. So you, you, it's a bit like cross matching blood. You might go to the yeah. bank and say, well, this patient, it shouldn't be such a bad reaction if we put those cells into this patient. Absolutely. Yeah, uh -huh. yes, 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 okay. yes. So if, you, if there are uh, so, um, uh, transplantation antigen, which is HLA, yeah. which is matched with the, uh, the, 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 uh, with the, the recipients, yeah. the recipients uh, 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 HLA, yeah. it causes very little uh, rejection. Okay. So it, it's good, but uh, you have to uh, select the patient based on, uh, on HLA. It takes lots of time, and uh, you have to very, 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 very small option for selecting patients. So in this case, uh, in our trial, HLA match is not needed. Right. So, uh, so but uh, we use, uh, so instead we use uh, immune suppressant. Okay. To suppress the so this is like when people have maybe a kidney transplant, you actually damp down their own immune system right. by giving them tablets or immunosuppressants. Actually, so yeah. in your trial, you, you don't try and match exactly the HLA immune type, but you with all the tablets, uh, give all the patients tablets to suppress their immune system. Right. To stop the rejection of those yes, cells. Yes, yes. So patients would need to take that for the rest of their lives? Uh, no, no. It's just one, one year. Probably one year. Okay. Probably one year. So yeah, after one year, uh, uh, so based on the previous results obtained from uh, fetal or midbrain tissue transplants, yeah. maybe one year is sufficient okay. to suppress the, uh, the initial rejection. After that, maybe no rejection occurs. Okay. Yeah. So how long does it take, I'm just thinking ahead, if, if for example this trial was successful, how long would it take to produce enough cells to serve all the patients we have? Is it, is it easy to scale this thing up? Ah, uh, that's a challenge. Actually, uh, uh, so at this moment, we need two months to, to grow the uh, dopaminate neurons from undifferentiated iPS cells. So two, two, two months, months for one two, patient. For one patient, to grow enough cells for one patient. Yeah. Because you end up putting in, I think I read, 2.4 million cells yeah, that's to right. treat just one half of the brain. That's right. So for both sides, you're talking about two months, but presumably that can be done in parallel. Ah, uh, no, you cannot do that because of the uh, limitations of the facility. We okay. can, yeah, we can grow the one, one patient cell, one, one, one subject cells at one time. Okay, and that would be just for half the yeah. Right. Yeah. So what you're saying is it might take four to six months before you can actually have enough for both sides. Ah, oh, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. We, we can scale up. We can scale up uh, in that sense. Yeah. But, but uh, it's still slow to, yeah, to grow the cells. That's right. And that's one of the challenges. Obviously, uh, with these new technologies, are there any concerns about safety mm -hmm. with these cells? What, what's the biggest thing? Actually, I, that's a very important question. The primary endpoint of our study is the, the growth. Tumor formation. Tumor. Tumor formation. Because and brain cancer. Uh, it's a brain, not brain cancer, brain tumor. Okay. Maybe it's a bit benign um, uh, brain tumor. Because it's a bit of a, one of those sort of strange contradictions, a benign brain tumor. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So it's growing inside your brain doesn't sound very benign, but well, what you're saying is it's not like a cancer cell, but it's these cells that perhaps have turned rogue 
and they're, 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 they're not like a, a normal, horrible brain tumor, but they're just reproducing, is that what you mean? Yeah, 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 they're, they're just reproducing, no, uh, no trans, and, uh, actually, it's not malignant. So they're not malignantly invading the brain, they're just getting yeah, invaded. that's right. They, but they still be a problem. Yeah, that's still be a problem, because, you know, the skull is basically limited. Yes, so it's it's <laughs> really no, no room for the skull. Yes, yeah, okay. that's right. So, uh, so in, in, the, 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 the uh, concern is when uh, when the undifferentiated IP cells is contaminated into the coronary cells, yeah. it makes makes tumors. Right. So, if you uh, the the uh, the size is enlarged, it will uh, so make pressure on the other normal tissues, yeah. make problems. Yeah. So if 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 your cars, it, you you have to stop the tire. Right. So and what would you do with the patient? Would they have to have some kind of surgery to chop those cells out again? Excuse me. So if if a patient did have a tumor growing, mm -hmm. would you be able to go in and take the tumor out? Probably we need not do the uh, actual surgery. We we can do so we can eliminate these cells by by uh some we can we can burn the uh, the tissues like okay so or so okay so you can actually if you like burn them out either yeah. either with an x-ray yeah. zapping that part of the brain or right. putting a, a, a sort of probe in and burning that part of the cell like we used to with thalamotomies and the old forms of surgery yeah, actually, right. yes yeah. so you just sort of um yeah, burn yeah. out those cells yeah, okay yeah, so gamma, that, gamma light, doesn't right. gamma knife yeah, yeah. yeah so you, you you have some and and, and how Obviously, you're doing the trial, and that's the reason you're doing it is for safety. Are there any um, signals about how likely that is to happen? Is it something you've seen in animals that happens once in a million times, or mm -hmm. do we know a, a sort of risk? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, actual risk. I think, uh, to, to uh, frankly speaking, I don't. Uh, I I'm not so, so much worried about uh, tumor formation. We are well prepared. We have a yeah, good prevention for for making tumors. But the, uh, the actual concern is uh, if you put so many cells into a patient's brain, it may cause dyskinesia, which is okay. abnormal movement. So these are the involuntary movements, and we saw those in the, in the last round of trials, which were stopped prematurely right. um, with this runaway dyskinesia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is your treatment worked too well. Yeah. And that, Am I right in thinking this is because when we put stem cells in, what we're really doing is just putting in cells that make dopamine. Mm -hmm. They're not making all of the nice connections that we used to have. Yeah, yeah. They're gone. Yeah, yeah. But we're looking at essentially taking away the tablets. That's mm -hmm. our, our best hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what you're saying is if you have too many of these cells, or well, they're growing too well, yeah, yeah. Uh, your patient will start having yes. problems and you might need to again do surgery. Uh, so in that case, yes, yes. In that case, maybe DBS is needed. That's right. So deep brain stimulation to but right, the over-treatment. Right, right. And so this is a, a, a study at the moment that's going on. You did your first patient, I think, just two days ago. Mm -hmm. Very excited, front page of the news. And everyone wants to know, well, when will this treatment be available, Doctor? Ah, that's a good, good question. <laughs> Very good question. So probably uh, we can recruit the patients or uh, the, the, the subjects uh, in, this, uh, in this clinical trial uh, the number of the subjects are seven. So we just one, uh, done one patient, right. and when we, we will be able to recruit the uh, remaining six patients uh, within a couple of months. Right. But uh, it takes time to, to grow the cells and uh, to do surgery. Maybe, maybe it takes uh, uh, three surgeries. Three surgeries per year is an uh, upper limit. So, and and th so you get to do three operations a year just on half of the brain. Uh, no, no, three operations uh, in, uh, at the same time on the both sides. So do they have both sides put at the same time? Uh, yeah. And the procedure is a little bit like um, a, a deep brain stimulation surgery. That you yes, make yes. A hole yes. and then put the cells in an injection. Right. And you do both sides on the same day. Yes. Yes. But what you're suggesting is it's going to be three patients every year. Yeah, three patients every year. So we it will take two years. To, to all the surgeries are done. Yeah. Now after that, you have to observe the patient for two months, two years. Two years. Two years. So it will take at least maybe four years, five years from yeah, now. Yeah, five years now. Five years. Yeah, five years. And that's for us to get the safety study. Yeah, yeah. So in that safety study, it's only going to have seven patients. Uh, you yeah. and I know that tablets might have a side effect maybe in one in a hundred patients. One percent of patients might get a, a rash from a tablet. So what yeah, you're yeah. saying is, that's not a lot of safety data. 
Ah. to say, oh, everyone can have this treatment now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So are you suggesting after this initial five-year study, we may have to do more studies before it becomes a treatment? No, I don't think so. Uh, because uh, uh, I think the, uh, the tablet, uh, you mean tablet in the supplement? In, in the I, I mean any tablet, antibiotic, you know. Ah, I mean. If I take an antibiotic, maybe it's a one in 100 chance that I get a rash. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. So if you've done seven patients and it's a one in, I don't know, 10,000 chance that they might get this kind of easier yeah, 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 yeah. That's a, that's you, right. you have to wonder how, how you know i mean if it's one in seven then we'll mm. we'll know <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah that's, 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 maybe it's, it is also this but, yeah. uh, but you think that if the first seven went really well yeah yeah we might see government supporting this as a treatment yeah i think so so there's a good uh good, good rule in japan in japan yeah and the number of the patients are very small, but yes. really, good, really good results with very small side effects. Yes. The, and there are also some effects, some positive effects. So yeah, uh, it benefits yeah. patients and there's no risk. Yeah. Then so, it could, it could come out. You, you mentioned Japan. Do you think this is a treatment that could be used internationally, or is the, is the technology and the science behind it going to not be able to be employed in? Europe or America or Oceania, oh, Asia. I, I think it's, 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 it is uh, it is uh, clinical trial based on global regulation. Right. Our, 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 our clinical trial is, is based on global regulation. So if, if the Japanese government approve our uh, trial to be applied to, to, to standard uh, therapies, probably it will uh, disse can be disseminated to, uh, the, to the rest of the world. Too. And the rest of the world have got the technology to do this. Yeah, technology is quite easy. Easy. Just need a Nobel Prize, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. <laughs> Just quite easy now that you've worked it out. Yeah, 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 Just yeah. very, very good. Yeah. And of course, every patient will be saying, "Well, you know, can I get into this? Can I be one of the magnificent seven? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, is there a chance that patients can still get into this trial from outside of Japan, or how will this be regulated? Ah, uh, okay. That's a that's a uh, very important question. Uh, so as far as this trial is concerned. Uh, the patients uh, uh, the, uh, should be enrolled in the national uh, Japanese insurance okay. because this is done based on the uh, national Japanese insurance. Right. So, so uh, you you should not be necessarily a Japanese, but you should be. Uh, yeah, uh, pay uh, your taxes. And yeah, 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 that's right. That's I right. see. So it's not going to be so easy for patients around the world yeah. to to get involved in this study. Just in, yet. Yeah, in this in this study. But, uh, yeah. So. I guess what you're saying is that um, we're always worried as doctors about balancing how excited we should be mm -hmm. um, against you know what the risks are. Right. Now, I, I guess you said that the original Swedish studies were done in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. We then saw those trials being done in the early noughties. Yeah, so yeah. run away this community, and now here we are, you know, 220, 220s. And I guess the the, the issue is whether. Um, we really think that this is going to be something that's going to change the landscape of Parkinson's. So perhaps you could tell us, what is the best outcome you see from this work? Uh, the best, uh, best scenario. You, you the know. best scenario. Yeah, yeah, okay. The scenario is the patients who took this, this uh, uh, transplantation uh, need, uh, do not need any more the, the tablets for levodopa. Okay, so. but they may still have problems like memory or balance. Actually, yeah, that's that's also an important point. Yeah, the patients, uh, the patients uh, should respond to to uh, level dopa uh, responsive symptoms, right? But uh, symptoms may 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 disappear uh, if uh, in, in best scenario. But uh, the other non motor symptoms cannot be resolved. Right. So what you're saying is. This isn't going to be a cure for Parkinson's, but it may change the landscape of how we treat Parkinson's disease. Yes, yes. Well, I, on behalf of the world, are very grateful for the work of you and your team. And I know that you have a very extensive team who are working very hard for our patients. Uh, I'm delighted you spent a bit of time with us chatting today, and uh, we wish you all the success and hope very much to see some positive outcomes. That'd be great. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. Much welcome.